Hey flower friends, this is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and we are back in the greenhouse. It's freezing out, it's freezing even in here, but it's winter. So I wanted to share with you how I propagate African violet leaves. Um, I did a video on repotting African violet, like when they're getting um, a long stem, and or just general repotting is fine too. Um, that works for it. But I wanted to show how propagate another way to propagate the leaves now as I was repotting the African violet violets a lot of leaves fell off so I was going to show you how that trick works and it works um, just as well as my other video on propagating African violet leaves so here is one set of leaves and you'll notice that this is kind of long I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to cut it off at an angle this is not absolutely necessary that you cut it at an angle but I did. And then I stick it down in. This is a wee yogurt jar that I have painted with glass paint just to make it a little bit prettier. Um, and I have it with perlite inside. And then I'm going to have water in here. And these leaves will sit in the water and perlite. I will fill up the perlite more. I want the bottom of the leaves to be right at the top of the perlite. So I guess I could cut it off and then it would be a little bit closer to being at the base. So I'll go ahead and put all of these leaves in here. Cut them all. Now the idea of cutting at an angle is so that they have more leaves or more stem surface to pull up water. So as you can see, I'm sticking them in here. And one thing about it, it doesn't matter how deep you have the perlite, just you want the leaf bottom to be at the, the I should say, the perlite should be at the base of the leaf bottom here. Because the babies typically come from the base of the leaf. Sometimes they will come from the bottom of the leaf, but that makes it harder for me to repot them or pot them up once they've grown roots. So or put on babies. So I have the leaf sitting right at the level of um, the bottom. Let me get some more perlite here. So I'm gonna go ahead. Now one thing about it, you don't have to have the water line up to the base of the leaves, just the perlite, because the perlite will have the moisture and um, in them, in it, and then that will be enough to start the babies. So I'm going to put this all in here and then I keep it in my kitchen windowsill because that way I can see um, if it needs to be topped up with water and it's just kind of fun sitting there. And I, that's why I like the pretty little jars to have sitting there because it's something pretty to look at and I can watch. Um, now many times they will put out babies faster if it's closer to spring, the longer day length. So I could also put these on my shelf in my office where I have grow lights. So that way they'd get the longer length of time and put out babies sooner. In fact, I'll do a test of one on my light shelf and one on my kitchen windowsill. Now I do keep track of everything on my light shelf because I'm starting seeds and what have you. So I'm always checking to make sure everything's doing well. So that being said, I will come back and I will show you when these start putting on babies and I'll add it to this portion of the video and you can see what it looks like. I, I also have how to pot up the babies, but those are the ones started in soil. So we'll have to do a video of that too or include it in this one. All right, I will see you when these make babies. Okay, now finally, after I put these leaves into this jar with just perlite and water, they have sprouted. And I'll try to get it in there. Sprouted little leaves and they're growing just fine. Let me see, I have one, two, three, four, five leaves and I think every single one of them has some babies on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pot them up. And I have these little two inch pots. I also have three inch pots. I probably have to grab a couple more because oh, that was a little deep um, I've got obviously five starts here and uh, I want to get them all 
pot it up. Oh, wait a minute. Here's some of our little ones. Good, 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 good. Forgive me for not being prepared. So here's some other little tiny ones. Small. And I would say these are the two inch wide, not the three. I have three inch. This is probably the three inch and this is the two. So anyways, the great thing about the two inch ones is because African violets like to bloom after they're a little bit crowded or uh, root bound, these will bloom much sooner. And I have a bunch that I have done before. So here's one and it's in one of the two inch pots. Um, and look how that's blooming so beautifully. Just gorgeous. It needs to be watered, I can feel. Now, one thing about with these small pots, you have to keep up because they dry out very quickly. And um, you may have to water even every day or every other day. So that being said, let's pot these up. This is my DIY potting soil that I have loosened with extra perlite and um, some horticultural sand. And I'm just getting, I'm filling it up maybe a three quarters of the way. I may have to dump some out because um, I don't know how deep these are in here. So here this is. There we go. I think I got you a little closer. I'm trying to get you a good angle. Okay, so I have some of my soil in here. And I'm going to pull these out. Where's my little doodad. I don't have it. I'm going to use this little, this keeps my irrigation hose down. It's a little hook that keeps it on the soil level. And I'm just loosening up the perlite in here. And I'm going to start, I'm going to dump it out over here. So you can see me. Jar aside. And I will just start gently working Oh, I didn't even know to do much. The perlite is so loose that it just pulls apart very easily. So this won't hurt your little plants. So this one actually has, I think, two plants on there, but I'm going to plant it as one. Now this, you see how deep those, let me get my arm out of the way. See how, well, fell off the mother plant. That's okay. Uh, to get it down in there, I need to dump out some of the soil. I could put it in one of these. Put it down in there and then I just gently fill it back up around it while holding the leaves of the little plant. Plantlet. I could try to pull those apart, but I didn't. I'm not worried about it if there's two in here. I'm not worried about it at all. And then because this is made with my compost, I got little pine needles in there. Okay, so there's one. I'm going to do the same with all these others. See how long those are? Set it down in there. Hold it by the mother leaf if it stays attached. It won't always. Try not to get my hand in the way. And then you just fill it up. And then I will um, water these in from the top and get them well moistened and then I'll put them in an area where I can keep track very easily of how much water they have. Now make sure you leave enough space at the top that you can water and as I started to say before, now I wanted to clear up a misunderstanding or something that's widely said, but it isn't correct. You only water African violets from the bottom. That's not true. You can water from the top. And even if you sprinkle the leaves a little bit, it doesn't really hurt it. It can discolor it if you have hard water, but it doesn't really hurt it unless you're soaking the leaves. Um, and if you think about it, and I said this in my prior one, these come from the rainforest. They get rained on. So it's not going to kill them or even really hurt them if you need to water from the top instead of the bottom. And you can water from the bottom. That's totally an option. But I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that. That's a gardening wives tale that gets passed on a lot. So I just wanted to let you know it's not entirely correct. So 
There's that one, and I have one last one. This one only has little tiny babies, but that's okay. We will pot that one up too. Making sure I'm in the camera. So anyways, there we go. Kind of got the babies a little dirty, but that's when washing it off with a stream of water, a gentle stream, will help a lot. So now I have five African violet babies all potted up and they started super easily. Okay, this is March 8th. And so this December 20th is when I started these. March 8th, it was through the winter. I had the little uh, pot sitting on my kitchen windowsill. So it didn't get long days. Um, some say during the active growing season is when they really do the best as far as starting from leaves. I start them whenever I have leaves or there's one that I want to propagate. I just bought a new one. I'm sorry I didn't bring it in here. I'll include a picture of it. That's gorgeous. It's, it's more um, bright pink than this is a, like a lavender pink or a fuchsia or a magenta. I have one that is just, it's almost red um, pink and it's just really beautiful. We were on our way to LA and we stopped in Home Depot for something and I spotted it and I knew if I didn't pick it up then, even though it's gonna be stuck in a car for a week, um, I wouldn't find it again. So I had to buy it and I just made sure that it was watered when we were at our vacation. So I hope you enjoyed this. I have another, um, and I may have mentioned this before, um, I have another African Violet propagating post that I shared another way that I do it. But this I have found to be highly successful. You don't have to put a tent or a hum you know keep them humid. This, when the perlite in, has the water, there's enough humidity around it from the water evaporating that they do just fine. And it may be helpful for those. I had some people write in and say that um, their African violet leaves molded. So I've never had that happen, but um, certainly can, I'm sure. So that may help them to be able to propagate their African violet leaves successfully and enjoy getting more bang for the buck. So if you have any questions about propagating African violets, please leave a question in the comments below. And or if you have um, a great source for African violets, I like to get them from um, Optimara has a brand. If you Google Optimara, you'll find where they sell their brand. And then um, Rob's Violet Barn. That's, uh, I have gotten quite, quite a few from them. And also, like I said, I picked one up at Home Depot and it was just gorgeous and I didn't have one like it. So that's another source, local garden center. So I will see you, I hope, in the next video.